Perfect. Um, Jennifer, do we have everybody else on? We do have everybody in Zoom and in PrimeGov, and we have eight commissioners on the call. Perfect. I'm going to be jumping off. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Amy. Amy. Thank you, Amy. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Only three minutes late. Well, I think we have a quorum. And it's safe to say that this meeting of the Oklahoma City Arts Commission for Monday, May 18th, 2020 is called to order. Welcome everyone. As you are aware, this meeting is live streamed from remote locations. We want to remind everyone that as you have arrived in our virtual meeting, we have muted your mic. As instructed in the agenda, those who called or emailed us in advance to let us know your name, contact number, and agenda item you wish to speak about will be recognized first. Your text, email, or call will not be received once the meeting has begun. Before the Arts Commissioners vote on each item, I will ask if any members of the public wish to speak. Since you are muted, when I call on you, please unmute yourself. On a phone, you'll use star six and then state your name and address for the record before you speak. That's again, your name and address. On a desktop computer or laptop, you'll hover your cursor over the microphone icon to remove the diagonal red line. If we lose our connection for this meeting for more than 15 minutes, we will resume our next regularly scheduled Arts Commission meeting on June 15th at 4 p.m. Jennifer, will you please call the roll? Thank you. Commissioner Chambers? Present. Commissioner Bailey? Present. Commissioner Yosef? Commissioner Booker? Commissioner Cooper? Present. Commissioner Eichmann? Present. Commissioner Hassenbeck? Present. Commissioner Hill? Commissioner Kovash? Present. Commissioner Loftus? Commissioner Owens? Commissioner Salyer? Present. Commissioner Seward? Present. Commissioner Sweeney? Commissioner Williams? Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item two, approval of the meeting minutes from the April 20th, 2020 meeting. After everyone has had a chance to read the meeting summary, I'll entertain a motion and a second. I would make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion from Commissioner Salyer and a second from Commissioner Cooper. I'm watching our prime gov and I'm moving forward. We have a motion from Commissioner Salyer and a second from Commissioner Cooper. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor, aye. 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 Rather, I'm sorry, I have to conduct a roll call vote. Whoops. I apologize. Jennifer, will you please conduct the roll? Commissioner Salyer? Aye. Commissioner Cooper? Aye. Commissioner Chambers? Aye. Commissioner Bailey? Aye. Commissioner Eichmann? Aye. Commissioner Hassenbeck? Aye. Commissioner Kovash? Aye. Commissioner Seward? Aye. Mr. Chair, this motion passes. Moving on to agenda item three, items for discussion action. Agenda item 3A, AC-20, hyphen 00007, update to Oklahoma City Arts Commission's definition of public art. This item was introduced at the January 27th, 2020 Arts Commission meeting and referred to a special committee. Further, it was deferred for discussion on February 17th, 2020 and further deferred for discussion on March 16th, 2020 and meeting was canceled on that date. Therefore, it was deferred on April 20th, 2020 to allow further community input prior to discussion and possible action 
on this day, May 18th, 2020. Robbie, will you please introduce this item? Yes, certainly. So commissioners, as you'll remember, this, this uh, item has been your friend for a very long time. And I think we first started working on this in 2008 and then again in 2012. Um, but since, since the January meeting, you have um, discussed and acted upon different parts. I think since, since all of you are the same commissioners that were here at the last meeting, I'm gonna go ahead and go forward. This was the works of art, how it should be categorized. And I apologize, I think this first um, statement right here needs another update. This should read short term. And that was one that we did not catch. So I wanna again say up here where it says works of art shall be categorized as temporary, that should be short term or permanent. And then you have your definition of artist, your prior to placement of any short term or permanent work of art, um, how the application should be reviewed. And the definition is a very broad definition because you know that works of art are constantly changing and you wanna keep up to date and be able to uh, be able to act upon anything new that's presented to you. Robbie, may I make a quick comment? Shouldn't we have three categories? We had permanent, we had temporary, and we had short term. You are so right. Actually, those slides are right. That's why I didn't change them. <laughs> Let me go back. Sorry. So we had temporary and under temporary work. As you'll see from the next slide, we've got the short term and then we've got the event, which is less than six weeks. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I should never second guess myself. So let's start this over. We've got two forms of art and they are temporary or permanent. And then we've discussed several times your definition of artist and that you're always gonna be looking at temporary or permanent and a very wide description of what art is so that you can respond to whatever is presented to you. Mm. Here's where we get to the, the further narrowing of that definition though. So permanent works of art are either structural or non-structural and they're displayed for two years or more, okay? Two years or more. And then anything less than two years is temporary or short term, okay? The temporary is more than six weeks, but less, but up to two years, less than two years. Short term has a maximum def, uh, duration of six weeks. And here's why. Here's why, because at your January meeting, you um, made some changes to how you review murals. And you're going to allow a, a bit of a spontaneity in the application for lawfully permitted murals as a live event commitment, provided that applicants uh, go ahead and, and make an application for a more permanent mural. Robbie, so I'm sorry to interrupt, but may I ask that all on the meeting, please mute yourself if you're not currently muted because we're getting a lot of feedback. So if you're not muted, please mute yourself. Thank you. Sorry for the interruption, Robbie. Sure. Do I, should I repeat that at all? Okay. Okay. So short term works of art have a duration of less than a six week period. And those applicants can seek an event permit, but if they want it to last longer, it will either be a, a temporary or permanent mural, okay? Sorry. So Robbie, I really hate to be beating a dead horse, but I think that specifies, paragraph D specifies that we have three distinct titles. Right. So if you go back to the first page in the description. Yes. Works of art need to be classified as one of those three, not one of those two. Short term is not a subset 
of temporary. It's a separate category in, in my reading of it. And we could address that in the motion that's made. Okay. To edit that. I just want that descriptor to sure. mirror what paragraph D says in the title. I see what you mean. Yeah. And then um, it's it makes sense too on B here. I don't know if everybody can see my cursor. Let's see. So here, I guess we can leave it this way because it would either be temporary or permanent. The short term would be under something else. Okay. Uh, Robbie. Yes. Uh, back on that definition, paragraph yes. B. Uh, I mean, this is just a nitpicky little thing, but in the last line, it talks about the uh, permit has been issued by the cultural uh, arts and cultural affairs liaison or her designee. I think that you should take the her out and put in the liaison's designee. Because we don't know how long we're going to be using this. I mean, I'm hoping that you will be there forever, forever. But so we don't have to make a change at some point in the future that it should be gender neutral. I agree with Commissioner Cooper and perhaps we just drop the modifier entirely and say arts and cultural affairs liaison or designee. And let's address that in the, in the motion as well. So ready to go on? Okay. So we have types of works of art classified. We have permanent works, again, two years or more. Temporary, that are more than six weeks, but less than two years. And then we've changed it to short-term works of art. These with maximum duration of six weeks. And these are the ones that we do under a live painting permit. Or, or some kind of an event permit, if they have a little more structure. Any comments or discussion on that section before we move on? Okay. And then those works of art, I'm sorry, I keep putting that forward, that require arts commission review, except the following. So those that are less than six weeks have administrative review and if structural in nature, also engineering review, and those can apply for a special event permit. So the only way they would come to the Arts Commission is if they wanted it to be there more than six weeks. But, but Bobby, I don't read that that they can get a special events permit. I read that they must get a special events permit. Correct. Everything that's put out in the public realm that's a work of art has to get a permit. Right, okay. So what we're saying is that if it's less than six weeks, all they have to do is get a special event permit. There's no reason to wait for Arts Commission review if it's a six week project. It could go live. If it's structural, it needs to come to you. But it, six weeks, things happen all the time out in the public realm and that you would not be reviewing them. Because six weeks is such a short period. And then if it's structural, it gets a permit or a, a structural review. Do commissioners have any other questions for Robbie? Well, at some point, I, I know I just sound like I'm anti-artist and I am not. Because uh, the area that we have some concern with or when, when a permit, whether it is a prospective special event permit or the actual permission from the Arts Commission, there are, it has come up and it continues to come up. We have an item on the agenda today, one of those that was where no uh, approval was sought. And after the fact, they're coming for approval. And is and I understand we're talking about a definition here, but at some point, 
since we're reworking this kind of uh, process, that there would be, I don't know, some sanction if they decide not to follow any of the uh, any of the requirements, which is kind of what's been happening because the artists are offered an opportunity to be paid by a building owner to put something in and they want it right away. And they're in a financial position where they just can't say no. So the sanction would be code enforcement. And that um, the property owner that allowed the painting uh, would receive a code enforcement violation and have to respond to that. And what normally happens is um, that the owner asks whoever they worked with um, to be the applicant, whether it was the artist or someone else, and that they seek a lawful permit for the mural so it can stay up. And Commissioner Cooper, I think the presumption is allowing this possibility of the special event permit would allow accessibility for artists, developers, property owners to do something legally in a more nimble process than appearing before the Arts Commission, any design review district, and finally council. I think Again, the presumption is this pre prevents your concern that I, I've heard you raise many times. There is no punishment for people just doing what they want and then asking forgiveness after the fact. I, I wonder if this makes us more nimble as a city. It's, it provides more access for artists to do what artists do and we're not slapping people on the wrist with wet noodles. Well, I mean, it's, it's not that I don't want them to be able to do their art, it really is not. But if we're going to have a process, we uh, should enforce our process. Otherwise, might as well have no process and say, this is free for all, just do whatever you want to because we don't wanna put mm -hmm. any kind of restrictions on it. And I'm sure that there are people who think that that's exactly how it should uh, operate because we shouldn't have to, we shouldn't be uh, restricting artistic uh, expression mm -hmm. by making them plan and get permission and go through a permitting process. Uh, the special permit still is gonna have some restriction on it and it still isn't going to, uh, I mean, it requires some time. And I'm thinking more about one item that's further down in our agenda where they said they were, they were asked to do it. They wanted it up right away. There, there wouldn't have been time to put a special permit because the, the, they wanted it immediately. And that's always gonna be an issue that we're gonna have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I have a comment. Uh, if, can you hear me? Uh -huh. Yes, Commissioner Seward, please go ahead. Oh, thank you. I was waiting uh, for you to acknowledge me. Um, I, I still think back to the days of the Kirk Schwartz Award um, when individuals and, and companies uh, across the city uh, created uh, works of art with, without oversight from the city um, and, and in a way I think this sort of negates the spirit of all that by, um, again, making uh, everyone jump through particular hoops to display art. So uh, Chairman, may I say something? Please. So right now, um, the city council has adopted an ordinance years ago um, and I've, I've looked at this quite a bit because I wanted to try to figure out why. And it looks like from the timing, the city was having a lot of issues with graffiti. And we needed to make a distinct separation on what was lawful and what was not. And it, it appears from the section of chapter 59 in the code that um, they came up with 
Well, graffiti is unlawfully established and it's a detriment to the neighborhood or the district or the surrounding property owners and that it represents an area where there's a lot of crime. And they were trying to make a distinction, a, a, a distinction between unlawful per painting and signs and which was art. So that's what we're trying to do today is to navigate between all of these different codes that the Arts Commission alone cannot change code. We can create an ordinance and we can take it all the way through all the review committees that it impacts, go to the planning commission. And that's what we're doing now with our code update. But what we're trying to do is establish some standing rules that assist the arts community in, in having a, a little bit of a quicker action from their requests. These are the things that commissioners um, Bailey and Kovash, when they worked with the task force on, that they were trying to create a little bit more nimbleness um, with a review because chapter 59 is not something we're going to change overnight and and we're relying on the code consultant over the next three years to help us change so i want i just want to make sure everybody knows that that we do have a code but we also have these standing rules where the arts commission in january suggested that well for those murals that we need to be done very quickly what about doing it if it's less than six weeks we could do it under an event permit and they could immediately apply for legality and lawfully pursue a mural so it's not later considered graffiti or at the risk of being considered graffiti i hope that helps um, it, to explain it does. How we're navigating. okay it does, except uh, I, this is a lot broader than just murals. Uh, if it's just murals, then it should be uh, stated as such. So, so let me give you an example that's not a mural then, okay? Um, we had a, uh, a work proposed that was in conjunction with Oklahoma Contemporary's opening. And it was a structural work, and it was by Denise Duong and Gabriel Friedman for Scissor Tail Park. And they needed to get it up by a certain day. And so we took it in the same way. It was a sculpture, but they needed to get it up before they received Arts Commission approval and downtown design review approval and a permit. And so we had engineering review it and suggest some changes. And then they submitted all their applications and I did an administrative review on it. And then we asked for a live event permit so that they could build it live. And then they immediately came to the Arts Commission to see, received approval, then downtown design, and then received a uh, more permanent permit. But through the process, what they found is they were gonna have it exhibited for a very short period of time. And in the end, they asked for permission or more of a six month or more period. So that would be an example of where we've done this for something that's a little more structural and sculptural. Commissioner Seward, do you have a follow-up question? Uh, well, I, I, or comment? I, can under, I can understand that example better because it's on uh, city property, uh, Scissor Tail Park is city property. Um, I don't know. I just think sometimes uh, we we work too hard to uh, try and have too much control over the arts community. That's just my comment. Thank you, Commissioner Seward. And, and I felt this way for a long time, as many of you are aware. There are many advocates on the commission who speak on the working life of practicing artists. Our code is structured that way that formed our commission. And in some ways, I feel like um, we are trying to use the code that we've been given in our city 
to work the best for the communities who we serve. And in our case, those are artists, those are designers, those are architects, arts managers. And I feel like we're being tugged in many directions, but I wonder if, if steps like this, including the consultation for future code changes are steering us in the right direction. That's my commentary. Other commissioners, any thoughts or comments? Well, I, I guess, uh, Chairman, my concern all along has been the restriction of um, the placement of art in private spaces, somebody's front yard, or, um, you know, we've got some classic examples of where somebody couldn't put a piece of sculpture in their yard for two years. Um, and so I'm really sensitive to try to figure out how we can have the least amount of regulation, but some level of control, not just a free for all. Um, and so John, I, I think I fall closer to your side, but I do, I think this short term solution is a help to somebody that needs, wants to do something quickly. And I guess I'm just thinking out loud that we need to be flexible with these things. And this is trying to address a gap between a much bigger code change. And if somebody comes to us and has an issue, we'll, we'll address it and have the capacity to make a change if we've made a mistake. So I just think it, we need to probably move on and see how this works for us. It Thank would you, probably, Commissioner Sellier. It would probably be more difficult to do that once the code is in place. Yes, so if I, if I may again uh, give you a comment about that, what we're doing here is we're creating small digestible versions, you know, because we can't just bring you a huge code. We're bringing you small pieces and discussing them. And then once we get it to a point that you like it and you're voting on it, we're kind of putting it aside and using it as, as a standing rule just for the Arts Commission. Right. But in the end, what the code consultants will be doing is all of these are going to be provided to them and it's going to become more comprehensive. And as we've told you before, we're going to bring all of that back to you and make sure it works together. The, the comprehensive smaller pieces, you know, the version, the comprehensive version of those smaller pieces. So you can look at it again and discuss it and make sure that works. But this will not become, this is not code yet. This is your version of standing rules, rules that you will use as you review things because it represents all of your opinion, right? But it's not code. We're still navigating code. As so a recommending body, we do not have bylaws. This is not city code, but we have adopted several plans, policies, and procedures that are our standing rules, one of which would be this if passed hopefully informing future good code changes. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Chairperson Chambers, this is Commissioner Eichmann. I, I, I also want to maybe just make one additional, at, at the end of this, you'll see the note that these standing rules are really primarily here to inform city projects. But I think what, uh, we, for my, you know, as, as years have gone by, when uh, you have private private projects, private developers do working on projects, they include art program uh, projects in their development. Uh, this has become a resource. I mean, over the years, it's sort of evolved where the Arts Commission provides, uh, while it's city regular, it's basically for city projects. Private developers have adopted some of the standing rules that we work with and live by. They're not they're they're not required but they are, but they do see it as a resource. Is that correct? That would be correct, correct uh, Ravi? Yes, and it's, it's something that I would note in the memos yes. that are written for the Arts Commission Review, reminding you that you looked at this before and this is what you said, to keep, to keep all of your information consistent, that as a group, you liked this, you discussed it at length, and you adopted it for your rules. So this would be a way. Now, anything I put in memos too 
It doesn't mean that at that particular Arts Commission meeting, when you discuss it, you decide it's different and you vote a different way, you know, that because you're the Arts Commission. But it would be it would be noted in those memos, and that would help me provide you with some kind of a staff recommendation based on the standing rules you you adopted before. Thank you, Robbie, and thank you, Commissioner Eichmann. Additional comments or questions from commissioners before I open this up. We have quite the audience of citizens, and if ours. Is there rather anyone here to speak for or against this motion or this topic or agenda item rather? Hearing none, if all questions are answered and all issues spoken to, I'll entertain a motion and a second. Commissioner Reichman moves approval. With the second. I have a recommendation from Commissioner Eichmann and a second from Commissioner Kovash. And that motion is to recommend that we adopt this language. Actually, we don't have to recommend because this is our rules um, to approve with, I believe, conditions. And Commissioner Eichmann and Kovash, correct me if I'm wrong that included the conditions of speaking to the three definitions, the distinct categories that Commissioner Salyer raised, as well as the gender specific modifier before designee, omitting that. Is that correct, Commissioner Eichmann? That is correct. Commissioner Kovash? Yes. I have a motion and a second to adopt this as standing rules, Commissioner, oh, I'm sorry, Robbie. But Chair, but I just want to make sure that um, also um, the staff recommendation here was to defer action on the definition of the curatorial plan as well. I wanted to make that was the recommendation that. from the last meeting was that we bring back uh, the de the curatorial plan and the def the minimal um, require qualifications for the principal curator, and that has been received by the special committee but they would like some time to be able to meet on that and bring that back separately. So I just wanted to make sure that was part of the motion. That language is struck from the memo that you submitted in the definitions currently, correct? Uh, no, that was the staff and special committee recommendation on the memo, it's, it's paragraph E. Right. Yeah, defer action on the definition for curatorial plan, right. Commissioners Eichmann and Kovash, are you okay with that as part of your motion? Yes, I am. Yes. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Jennifer, will you please call the roll for vote? Commissioner Eichmann? Yes. Commissioner Kovash? Yes. Commissioner Chambers? Yes. Commissioner Bailey? Yes. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Hassenbeck? Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Salyer? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? No. Mr. Chair, that is seven ayes and one nay. The motion carries. Moving on to agenda item 3B, AC. Hi. Uh, Chairman, we didn't get the first part of what you said there. Could you oh. say that? Because I, I unmuted you right there at the end. So I apologize. Could... The motion carries. Okay. And we heard that there were seven ayes and one nay. That's correct. And we, okay, thank you. Got it. Our quorum currently, we have nine people in attendance, voting members. 
and that was a majority vote, correct? And so it carries. Right. I just wanted to make sure we got all the votes to, if we have nine there. Yes, the clerk has noted the difference. I'm sorry about that error. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to agenda item 3B, AC-20-00011, Glitter Alley, Mural by Dusty Gilpin, address 2127 Northwest 39th Street for 39th Street District Association. Robbie, please introduce the item. Okay. Here we go. So this mural is located, as you can see, there's Barnes Avenue and 39th Street. And the mural is located in an area behind the building where there is a lot of parking um, for a lot of the activities in the district. Parking's at a premium in this district. And the north wall in the alley, this is the business establishment is the rec room. It's an entertainment club. And I've, I've gone and given you a lot of the history of the area, including Route 66 and some other things. On this particular mural, um, I've gone into the code and uh, found the definition for artistic graphics. And the reason I pulled those out, even though uh, a lot of times you would look at this and say, is it a mural? The, the words Glitter Alley are more than 10%. So using that, I know you've wanted to explore a lot of different definitions for mural. So I, every, anything that has, um, lettering that's over 10% of the total size of the mural, I've started pulling out as artistic graphics. And so you can see here um, what it looks like. Now this mural is already painted. It was painted in time for the Pride Festival last year. And here you can see a better image of it, 10 feet high, 18 feet wide. The other thing I went back and did is, um, now that we've changed to our different, different memo format, I did want to, under issues and considerations, to point out um, why in, in the code, in the Oklahoma City Code, the definition of graffiti was established. And a lot of the reason was some that I mentioned on the previous case, that it was related to criminal street gang activity and that it was detrimental to the beauty of the community. And rather than put that label on this, even though it was unlawfully established, I wanted to make sure that we pointed out some reasons why you may choose to um, recommend it for a permit. The other thing I wanted to bring up is the 39th Street District, as you'll see in the next case, we've been working with them, the Office of Arts and Cultural Affairs and the Commercial District Revitalization Program and we've been assisting them through a, a competitive mural process um, and working with them for quite a few months. And I encourage them to bring this to the Arts Commission and have it lawfully established and, and permitted so that they wouldn't run the risk of losing it. And so I wanted to point that out as you review it and ask, as you ask questions that this was something that, um, that, that the Office of Arts and Cultural Affairs encouraged and, and so that the mural would not be at risk. And so that it would have Vera waivers and all the other um, legal recommendations of the Arts Commission. Thank you, Robbie. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, any comments or questions? I have one. I'm an Oklahoma City made kid and I happen to be an Oklahoma City made gay kid. And this is a special place to me. And it was not beautiful. And I'm really impressed with how Dusty and his artistic ability has brightened a special place in, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional, a special place in my life. Um, this district was a refuge when it didn't exist. And um, this is meaningful for me. Thank you. Rather, let me be chair again. Other comments or questions from commissioners? 
<laughs> well, I, I think the piece is lovely. I don't think I need to address the fact that it was started outside the permit process because it's, it's a lovely piece uh, and I, I think it looks very nice. Uh, I remember the conversation at the Arts Commission meeting when the police came and talked about the benefit of having murals uh, and in the uh, war against destructive graffiti. And this certainly couldn't be classified that way. So uh, w without regard to the fact that it may have been done with, uh, outside the process, I mean, it's, it's a lovely, lovely piece. And um, I, I, Dusty did a lovely job. Thank you, Commissioner Cooper. Other commissioners, questions or comments? Just curious because I mean, it is, it looks great. And I drive through that area quite a bit um, and I'm happy about it, but why didn't we get a permit? Just curious. I mean, this, this was, this is definitely in a time frame when we've talked about all this, just. <clears throat> I, I, th I think the narrative that was supplied with it, they acknowledged that it was not, permission was not requested and that the owner of the building uh, came to him and it was sort of a last minute deal right before the pride uh, parade and they wanted something done right away and there wasn't, they just didn't feel like there was enough time to go through the process. I don't know that they acknowledged the process, <laughs> but it was, it came up and needed to be done right away. And it was a response to an event. But it's certainly incredibly exciting how that event has really blossomed and taken off and grown. And to support that, you know, I think it's great. But, um, and I think I saw that Dusty popped up on the screen is listening. So, you know, these are just continue to be those little thorns for, for those of us that think there should be some kind of process and just some kind of vetting, so. I also appreciate Robbie and her technical assistance. This happened and she made sure that this was placed on the docket so it was done so um, in a way that can remain and um, be approved or rather recommended by our body. Yeah. Others? Comments or questions from commissioners? Dusty, I believe you're on this call. I'm not putting you on the spot. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. Is there I anything hear. you'd like to share? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so in regards to why this mural wasn't permitted, my bad, you know, <laughs> here I am again. <laughs> Uh, this one was just, we were trying to expedite it before the pride parade. Honestly, this piece was just donated by me as well. Um, I got a phone call from a friend. They were like, we've got this alley. The kids are hanging out here and we just want to make it special because it looks like trash. And so I literally just filled my truck up with all the extra paint that I had. I drove over there. I painted it. I mean, this is not my best work. And to be honest, I don't even think we had a draft. I think I just like, they just wanted something bright and funky. They wanted it to say glitter alley. So I just did it for my friends. And it is, I'm not, don't want to get into the, just the distance that it is. I mean, this thing is really not visible. Like you have to drive off of 39th street through a parking lot behind a building and, and to, to call it an alley is maybe even like a over glorification for what this little thoroughfare is, but it is back there. And I just did it for the, the weekend. Even when I was talking to Ginger in regards to getting it permitted, I told her, I was like, we don't have to get this permitted. This was such a quick, you know, job, if you guys want to paint over it, I'm not going to be offended by that. But 
it is more, it is much more special to that community. You know, I look at it and I'm just like, that was a quick little job, but it really was appreciated and, and I'm humbled by that. And so uh, that's why they wanted to end up doing the, the permitting. So um, that's about all I have to say on it. Thank you, Mr. Gilpin. Any other comments or questions from commissioners or citizens who wish to speak for or against this item? I, I have a, this is Commissioner Bailey. I have a question for Dusty Gilpin. Would this have been a piece that you would have uh, procured a special event permit for if um, we had the new uh, guidelines that we just approved earlier in this meeting? Are you there, Dusty? Oh, uh well, yeah, of course. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know me, I'm a legal, legal eagle. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't speak up earlier, but um, I do think the, the special event process, that is something that I like. I love seeing that we're, we're all kind of working towards something that can expedite the process a little bit more, because I think you know, I understand that, that you guys are a recommending body and I've definitely spoken my piece on this a lot. Um, so just to figuring out a way that we can expedite some of this stuff because there's so many opportunities that artists, working artists like myself have where it's like, we need a mural. Will you come do it this weekend? And we're paying, you know, and this one wasn't a paying job, but it was, you just can't wait a month sometimes. And so I do appreciate the work that the commission is doing to uh, expedite that process. Commissioner Bailey, do you have a follow-up to that? No, thank you. Any other citizens or commissioners who wish to speak for or against this item? I'd like to move for approval. I have a motion for recommendation from Commissioner second. Seward. Second. And a second from whom? Uh, Hill. A second from Commissioner Hill. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Jennifer, will you please conduct the roll call vote? Commissioner Seward. Yay. Commissioner Hill. Yes. Commissioner Chambers. Yes. Commissioner Bailey. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Eichmann? Yes. Commissioner Hassenbeck? Yes. Commissioner Kobosh? Yes. This motion passes. <laughs> Moving on to agenda item 3C, but before I do, I need to offer this reminder that if we lose our connection for this meeting for more than 15 minutes, we will resume at our next regularly scheduled Arts Commission meeting on June 15th at 4 p.m. Now, moving on to agenda item 3C, AC-20-00012, fabulous, mural by Dusty Gilpin, address 2125 Northwest 39th Street for 39th Street District Association. Robbie, please introduce this item. Thank you, Chairman. So this mural artistic graphic is located on the east wall of the Apothecary 39th, and it's a bar offering vintage and contemporary cocktails, craft beer, bubbly wines, and their website states they have a vintage style atmosphere with classic jazz recordings and occasional live musicians. And this is meant to be kind of a gateway welcoming feature of the district. Sorry about the quality of this photo, but here you can see the front. And this is the wall that the mural would be located on, um, this east wall. And again, I've used the civic use unit classification for artistic graphics because as you can see, um, uh, the words and the numbers on this take up far more than 10% of the area. 
Um, the recommendation, this is the one where I provided technical assistance and the committee of the 39th Street District went through a process with Dusty Gilpin um, with several redesigns and then they came up with this and the property owner also gave his permission to paint it. And with this one, um, the one thing that does not follow the typical standards of the Arts Commission is that there was not an art marker included. So I did include that under your recommendation that as a commission that you may want to consider including an art marker because this would help educate and engage the public about who the artist was and if there was any question about the title and the year it was painted. Robbie, any additional comments? No, the staff recommended approval. Again, artist Dusty Gilpin is present, um, as well as the 39th District Volunteer Committee Chair Ginger McGovern is present. And also planning staff, our commercial district revitalization representative, Susan Atkinson. Um, I believe you're all on um, the call currently or on the meeting conference. Is there anything we can go in that order? Artist, the district representative and city staff, Susan, um, that you would like to add? Um, I was just gonna add that uh, William Larson is gonna help me install this mural just as another artist. And um, we worked with the 39th Street District to draft and, and come up with this concept. And we went through probably a dozen different variations of this. And this is one that the, the whole committee approved on and I'm stoked on it and humbled by it. So, you know, I think Ginger can take it from here. Thank you, Dusty. Ginger, is there anything you would like to add? Um, I'll just elaborate a little bit on our process. Uh, we did have a committee. We used the city's pre-qualified list of artists for murals and took samples of their work and then voted to uh, on our favorite and that's how we selected Dusty. And then he submitted some drafts for our consideration. We picked the one we liked the best and then we worked with the property owner. And uh, we also had a, a city councilman on our committee, uh, James Cooper, who represents Ward 2, which covers this district. Uh, he was on our committee and he provided input to us also. Uh, so we felt like we covered a lot of bases and just um, going back to the previous uh, mural, you know, the subject of that one came up when we started working on this. And I guess just to provide a little information that the 39th district did not solicit the Glitter Alley mural painting. It was a um, a group called OKC Pride Alliance that actually solicited the painting of that mural. But since we, we had selected Dusty for this, uh, it was pointed out to us that this was a great opportunity if we wanted to keep the Glitter Alley mural that we could take responsibility for it and get the permit uh, for that, you know, apply for a permit retroactively for that mural at the same time. And since we know how much that Glitter Alley uh, mural means to the community, what they've told us, we decided that we would take that on and apply for that permit also. So we're very happy to be permitting two at the same time. Thank you for your comments, Ginger. Susan, is there anything that you would like to add? Uh, yes, thank you so much. Um, Arts Commission. Uh, I want to just thank Ginger uh, for being a very able chair of this committee process. Uh, and I want to thank Dusty for being very patient as the committee worked through its process. Um, 39th Street is one of our uh, a dozen commercial districts in the city's commercial district revitalization program. I am uh, fortunate enough to be their staff person. Um, I think 
I cannot underscore the importance right now, particularly to uh, a bar and entertainment district that has been completely shuttered for the last two months, um, how significant getting this um, mural uh, legally permitted and installed in the very near future is to the district. It, it gives everyone a degree of hope that uh, you know, the new normal can, can, can start to begin. Um, and um, I'm really grateful for the commission's consideration of this very worthy project. Thank you, Susan. Commissioners, do you have any questions or comments for staff or um, the artist or the members or representatives of the district? I have a question, this is Commissioner Bailey. Um, this is actually probably a staff question. The first one is, do we need another Vera waiver from the artist that's assisting Dusty on this? Yes, thank you, Commissioner okay. Bailey. I was going to, <laughs> to say that before I'm, I made a motion. I, I'm very excited about the mural, um, and, and I couldn't agree more with uh, city staff on how much adding art into commercial areas is going to matter over the next year. So I'm, I'm happy to see several pieces in commercial districts. Um, the second question I have is actually for the artist, and this is in reference to the art marker. Um, it, Dusty, are you planning to sign this piece or how, how are you planning to indicate that you did the work on this? I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah we can make an art marker sure okay I mean, that's easy yeah I, and I think there is actually about a little two foot uh spot just to the south of that that would be brick that won't be painted that we could affix an art marker on and there's also a little uh light pole in that um like right in front of that parking area too that we could affix like some sort of little mm -hmm. vinyl sign or something if we need to do that that seems like a good solution that doesn't take away from the mural. Um, Whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I want to check these boxes on the memo from city staff if I <laughs> can. Those, that's all, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Bailey. Other commissioners. Okay, Brian, have one question. Commissioner Seward, please. Yes, um, and this is John Seward, uh, uh, Arts Commissioner. And uh, I noticed that on the photograph that Robbie submitted earlier, there is a handicap sign that looks, uh, appears to be mounted to the side of that building. Um, as you can see there, even though it is uh, uh, a little mm -hmm. hazy or fuzzy, how will that be addressed in the design? The can bar I owner said that he would move that uh, out of the actual mural painting the his parking goes uh farther north than that and he will either move it to the north or he can move it to the opposite side uh, which would be the west side west of the side. adjacent building yeah okay it, very good thank you and again that was um the 39th District Volunteer Committee Chair Ginger speaking to Commissioner Seward's response. Yeah, you know, Commissioner Chairman, I would just like to add my congratulations. I really think it's wonderful to begin to see some activity on 39th Street that's going to brighten up that uh, stretch of the neighborhood. And there's there's a lot going on, but it doesn't um, speak as well as this kind of thing does. So I'm really excited to see this happening and appreciate Dusty coming before us first. Uh, Chairman Chambers, may I add one more comment? Please. Uh, just FYI, uh, the 39th Street um, District will be very soon be the recipient of a streetscape revitalization project that is set to begin in August. Um, this will be along 39th between Penn and Young's Boulevard. So it's about a three block area that encompasses the district. Um, it is, this is funded by sales tax money. Uh, so this, the, the, I think you could think of this mural and its companion uh, now two resources by world famous Oklahoma City based artist, Dusty Gilpin, um, 
you can think of this as sort of the first gesture in the streetscape revitalization project that will be getting underway soon. So it's a very nice way to get that started. That's exciting news. Thank you, Susan. Other commissioners, comments or questions? Any other citizens who wish to speak for or against this item? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion and a second to recommend with the conditions of an art marker, art marker and a Vera waiver. <laughs> so moved. I have a, um, a motion from Commissioner Cooper and a second from Commissioner Seward. Is that correct? Yes. Any further discussion? And that motion was to recommend with the two conditions of the Vera waiver and the art marker. Hearing no further discussion, Jennifer, will you please conduct the roll call vote? Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Seward? Yes. Commissioner Chambers? Yes. Commissioner Bailey? Yes. yes. Commissioner Eichmann? Yes. Commissioner Hassenbeck? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Kovach? Yes. Commissioner Salyer? Commissioner Salyer? I'm so sorry, yes. I didn't realize I was muted, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Chair, this motion passes. Motion carries. Moving on to agenda item 3D. AC-20-00013, thank you, healthcare workers. Mural by Dusty, Gilp by Dusty Gilpin and Sergio Tank Ramirez. Address 1000 North Walker Avenue for Midtown Association and Downtown Oklahoma City Partnership. Ravi, please introduce this item. So this is a, a mural that, um, that we were in a hurry to get painted um, because the idea came about, you know, to thank healthcare workers and uh, the downtown Oklahoma City partnership um, in working with Midtown uh, wanted to go ahead. This is the Midtown district was their partner on this. Um, they wanted to support healthcare workers at SF, SM Health in the Midtown community and throughout Oklahoma City. And so you can see here, this is a, a vacant lot owned by RICO, or some know them as Midtown Renaissance. Um, the, they received a special event permit within 24 hours of applying and immediately erected a 10 foot wide by eight foot high fence um, it has wood on both sides to kind of close it in. You'll see another item later on the on your agenda about the east wall. Um, but the west wall is the subject for, for this particular item. Here you can see it as you're exiting St. Anthony's um, surface parking. And here is the mural design itself, which it is already painted. And so this, um, this, the permitting for permanent status or even uh, temporary status would be reviewed by the Arts Commission and a recommendation, compliance with downtown business district regulations and um, the approval of a certificate of approval and then a signed permit and a fence permit. So, and this is also being brought to you as an artistic graphic mural because the thank you is larger than 10%. And so I'll be happy to answer any questions that the commissioners may have. Any questions, commissioners, for staff, for Robbie? I know also in the meeting, we have in attendance Kristen Vales of Downtown OKC Partnerships. She is the applicant as well as artist Dusty Gilpin is still on the, on the meeting. Uh, Kristen, is there anything that you'd like to add? Sure. Um, we were excited to have this opportunity and, um, you know, it was 
certainly timely with everything that's happening. And so we got to work with the Midtown Board to make this happen quickly. And so it's been really cool to kind of go through this process with the special event live painting. And so this is just an example of how it can work for something that just kind of comes up and no one could have really prepared us for um, coronavirus and, and all of its impacts. And, you know, the Midtown Association had funds that they had to reallocate due to some cancellation of things. And so we were excited about the opportunity and those funds are kind of specific on how they can be used. And we couldn't necessarily go out and support local businesses directly with how those funds are uh, specified. Mm -hmm. So this was a way to say thank you to the healthcare workers and just kind of celebrate Midtown and during this time. And so we were thrilled to be able to turn a project around so quickly. So happy to answer any questions about our process. Thank you, Kristen. Before posing any questions to her, I wondered if we could hear from Dusty or is, is Tank on the call? Anybody, any of the artists who could speak to this? Uh, I'm here, but I don't think Tank is on the call. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just a great project. Uh, Kristen was excellent to work with. <laughs> um, we, Tank and I have been painting together for like, 10 years and uh, we like really kind of co or collaborated on this and uh, his style kind of shines through with the floral patterns and he's um, an aerosol artist as well. Um, and so we got out there and um, we created a couple drafts and they approved the drafts and we just installed it. I mean, there, it was a pretty seamless process and I know they did the the uh, special event permit, which made it go super smooth. So, yeah. Thank you, Dusty. No problem. Commissioners, any other questions for the applicants, the artists, or staff? Well, not, a question, that not a question, Mr. Chair, but I do know just from several conversations with um, staff at St. Anthony, how grateful they are. They really appreciated seeing this and um you know driving up and down walker it's so visible but um you know from joe hodges and uh, um, tammy and uh, they just were really grateful um that everybody stepped up so fast to um say thank you so i'm really proud that this was a thank you commissioner salier any other commissioners comments or questions I would make a motion to approve. This is Commissioner Hassenbeck. I have a motion from Commissioner Hassenbeck. I'll second. And that second was from whom? Hill. Commissioner Hill. Hill. And staff, remind me, Robbie, were there any conditions with this? Uh, I don't believe there were. Let me check again. No. It was no just conditions. Yeah, to Downtown Design Review and Development Services. Pure recommendation, motion from Hassenbeck, second from Hill, any further discussion? Hearing none, Jennifer, will you please conduct the roll call vote? Commissioner Hassenbeck? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Chambers? Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Bailey? Yes. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Eichmann? Yes. Commissioner Kovash? Yes. Commissioner Salyer? Yes. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. This motion passes. The motion is carried. Moving on to agenda item 3E, AC-20-00001, territorial plan curated exhibition focused on design and the selection of graphic artists, illustrators, and commercial artists for the Automobile Alley Door Tour at 21 sites listed on the agenda. And I apologize to our council, Rita, because I have not asked the citizens who are speaking to state their address. I will, I will do so henceforth. Um, Robbie, will you please introduce this item? Certainly, Chairman. So the applicant here is um, the Downtown Oklahoma City Partnership um, 
Joe Hudson and Kristen Bales were the applicants. And they're, they're trying to designate a curatorial plan with Kristen Bales as the curator, um, who many of you know has curated several things in her career. These, all these works on the 21 sites will be located on private service doors in the Automobile Alley District. And this will extend from Northwest 4th to West Park Place. And in the next um, slide here, you can see all the different sites. So it's quite extensive. Um, the curatorial plan is complete. Um, Kristen Bales used um, other examples um, that we had and then of course improved on those, which we always ap appreciate when each applicant continues to improve on previous plans. Um, she, they also included examples, the before and after shots of what they thought the doors would look like. Um, so I wanted to go through these for you so you can see the amount of change that this will cause in the alleyway in the district. And it will certainly um, provide much more interest and hopefully a lot more pedestrian activity. You can see in a lot of places, it's going to erase some of the, um, you know, just the rust and the need for updated paint. It also, in some cases, even helps to connect what might be going on there, um, where uh, the curator could do that. Um, in our civic use unit ca classifications, we do have a category for cultural exhibits, and that's where I place this. Um, I asked Kristen why she really, because she already knew what was being proposed in the artist's names, um, I asked her why she was going ahead and asking for a curatorial plan. And because of the length of time that this will be up, and if there's any damage to the doorways, she wanted to have the ability to change out some of the graphics. So by, a, by a recommending her curatorial plan, she'd have the ability to do that. Um, there's several conditions though, um, because this was quite a bit to put together. Um, each artist, will um, we've recommended that they sign a Visual Arts Rights Act waiver so that way, if their work did have to be removed, there'd be no problem replacing it with another. Um, the Downtown Oklahoma City Partnership is currently collecting all the partnership owner permission forms. In fact, I do believe that we did receive those already after um, we processed this application. Um, we know that there's plans for an art marker to be installed at each location. So just making sure that we reinforce that some of these doors, I know the downtown design review group, when they looked at this, they were worried that there might be some exit doors um, that were important for emergencies, and they wanted to make sure the fire marshal reviewed it, so I listed that as one of your conditions. And then also that a certificate of approval be issued, and then a permit by development services. And I'd be happy to answer any other questions you might have about this, and also Kristen Bales is on the call. Yeah, before we go to Kristen, um, the principal curator and representative from downtown OKC partnerships, any questions for staff for Robbie in particular? Hearing none, Kristen, would you like to speak to this item? Sure. Shall I give my address? Yes, please. <laughs> 20 Kristen Bales, 2228 Northwest 15th Street, Oklahoma City, 73107. So this project was uh, the Automoba Alley Board of Directors, a placemaking project that they had uh, budgeted for this year. And so we were excited to kind of do something different to activate the alleyways and um, the opportunity to do a call to designers specifically was interesting for this because we got to end up working with a lot of artists that we haven't had the opportunity to work um, with in the past by kind of opening it up to graphic designers and freelance de designers and stuff like that. And so um, I worked with between the artists and the property owners to kind of determine what would be good fits for each location and made my recommendations to each property owner and kind of got their feedback. So it was quite a process working um, with 21 doors and getting the permissions and and matching those with the artists, but it was really fun. And I think we had a good outcome and we've even discovered some new artists that we weren't aware of in the past. So um, I think it's a great 
project to highlight uh, artists in Oklahoma City and designers that really kind of reflects the care of Automobile Alley of design. We've got a lot of passionate designers and architects in the neighborhood. And so I'm happy to answer any questions. And uh, Robbie's right, we, we would like the flexibility to address a door in case there's damage or, um, you know, any issues that might come up, we'd like the flexibility to be able to replace it with another design or something like that. So happy to- Thank you, Kristen. Uh, I have a question and Kristen probably actually answered it in her explanation, but I just wanted to clarify. And this is Commissioner Cooper speaking. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Um, did the uh, did the tenants or owners of the properties get to select an artist, or did you just make a recommendation uh, based on discussions with the uh, uh, tenants or owners of the buildings? So we kind of got feedback on which. Um, artworks that they liked more and then I just kind of went with from their feedback and placing um, some of the images where I thought they might look better than others. So it was kind of a partnership project because I got their feedback but ultimately made the selection on what went where. Okay, thank you. Gary, this is Commissioner Salyer and as a happy recipient of some of these, um, it was really a great process. Uh, we did get to review, you know, some of the designs and I think um, Kristen and Joe and I got to talk. There's one of them that looks like slices or, or pieces of pizza. And that's ended up on the back of Hideaway's door. And so there were just some really cute things that were very good fits and seemed like they would work, you know, in my case, better than some others. I'm very happy to report that the one on the Excel door will actually cover up some of that rust. So we're excited. I, I never thought that I would want to take a tour of the back doors on Automobile Alley, but it's <laughs> all these, all these uh, pieces of art are, look like a lot of fun. Just make sure you come knock on the door when you're finished and come on yeah. and say hi. <laughs> Thank yous to Commissioners Cooper and Salier. Other commissioners, any comments or questions? This is Commissioner Bailey. I have Commissioner a Bailey, please. I have a question. What is, and I apologize if this was brought up earlier, what is the term length of the this project? And then do we, can we reapprove it in a similar way as we have done other curatorial plans if they decide they want to continue uh, this longer term than whatever? Robbie? So, um, the, right now in the curatorial plan, it says that the designs will be on display not more than one year, but the CA that will be issued will be a two a, a two year CA. So if they wanted to come back and amend the plan for a different theme or um, a, a longer term, that would be easy to do. That would just be an agenda item to the Arts Commission and we would most likely hold it under the same CA and permit. So, okay. But Kristen, that, would be, that would be navigated at the time. I didn't work that out in advance, but okay. that's the way we've done other things, so. As a follow-up to Commissioner Bailey's question, Kristen, what do you think the intentions of property owners and Oklahoma City partnerships would be? I, I believe it would be our desire to continue this project and even expand on it. So possibly get new locations, new door designs that we could add in in the future, um, as well as the opportunity to swap out any designs if we needed to based on the duration of the vinyl. Um, because these are vinyl, um, we kind of went with that one to two year range, uh, anticipating that there might be some weather issues or, you know, something hitting them or something like that, so. Commissioner Bailey, did that speak to your question? Yes, it did. I just wanted to make sure that that we gave that flexibility yeah. to the applicant. Thank you. Other commissioners or anyone at this point who would like to speak for or against this item? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion in a second for recommendations like with conditions. 
I'd like to move approval. I'd like to second. I have a Salyer. motion from Commissioner Cooper and a second from Commissioner Salyer. And again, this is a recommendation. Robbie, will you please state those conditions again? Absolutely. So the first one is that Visual Arts Rights Act waiver to be submitted to the author, Office of Arts and Cultural Affairs prior to installation. Property owner permission forms be completed and submitted for the owner of each site where the artwork will be located. That an art marker be installed at each location. Fire marshal review and approval of the proposed plan. And then a CA by the Downtown Design Review Committee and an appropriate permit. Thank you, Robbie. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Jennifer, will you please conduct the roll call vote? Thank you. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Salyer? Yes. Commissioner Chambers? Aye. Commissioner Bailey? Yes. Commissioner Eichmann? Yes. Commissioner Hassenbeck? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Kovash? Yes. Commissioner Seward? Yes. Mr. Chair, this motion passes. Motion is carried. <laughs> Moving on to agenda item 3F, AC hyphen 20 hyphen 00015. Thank you, essential workers. Mural by Rihanna Deck, address 1000 North Walker Ave Avenue for Midtown Rotary and Downtown Oklahoma City Partnership. Robbie, please introduce this item. Yes, so, so this is the sister item to agenda item D, which was the west side of the wall. This is the east side of the wall. And instead of the Midtown District, you heard that this is the Midtown Rotary sponsoring this one. And so the artist on this one is Rihanna Deck, and she unfortunately is, is traveling to deliver a painting. So she couldn't join us, but we do have um, the applicants downtown Oklahoma City partnership representatives here. Um, this is another one that we reviewed with, uh, we approved for a live painting permit within 24 hours of a completed application. The first time the application did come in, it was not in full color. So we requested full color so that we could process it and then immediately um, applied for a little bit more permanence through Arts Commission Downtown Design Review. And in fact, Downtown Design Review will actually add this to the same agenda item when they reviewed it. So there was only one fee and then we're hoping for only one fee on the actual permit. But I kept it two different items because it's two different works of art for the Arts Commission's docket. Um, there were no conditions recommended by staff on this item. So we'll be happy to answer any other questions <laughs> I have. Any questions from commissioners for staff for Robbie? Hearing none, Kristen, would you like to speak to this application? Sure. At our Midtown board meeting, we had discussed that the, we didn't really have enough funds to do the East Wall, but that would be something that we would hope to do uh, in the future. So out of that conversation, Midtown Rotary expressed some interest in helping us uh, complete uh, both sides. So they went through their own process and did a very quick call to artists. Uh, I believe they selected a few artists and asked them to submit designs and pay them to do those designs uh, quickly and selected Rihanna. And uh, Downtown Oklahoma City Partnership has experience working with her on our underpass mural. And so we were excited to have um, Rihanna join us again and do this wall that speaks more to the essential workers, um, kind of shouting out our grocery workers, our Midtown restaurants and waitresses and um, everyone who's kind of keeping Midtown going throughout this crisis. Thank you, Kristen. I also see Lee Morgan, a representative from Midtown Rotary. Would you like to speak to this item? No, thanks for the opportunity. Any other questions from commissioners or comments for staff or the applicants? 
Uh, Commissioner Seward here, is there a, is there a design uh, that's been submitted for this? Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't even go on with her. So here's, yes, Commissioner, there it is. And it was in your packet. So I hope you got to look at it in advance. I'm sure you were saying that for the other members of the public that have tuned in here. But yes, there is the beautiful design by Rihanna Deck. <laughs> Any additional questions or comments for staff or the applicants? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion so in a moved. second. I have a motion from Commissioner Seward. Second, Commissioner Bailey. A second from Commissioner Bailey. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Jennifer, will you please conduct the roll call vote? Commissioner Seward. Yes. Commissioner Bailey? Yes. yes. Commissioner Chambers? Yes. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Eichmann? Yes. Commissioner Hassenbeck? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Kovash? Yes. Commissioner Salyer? Yes. Mr. Chair, this motion passes. Motion is carried. Moving on to agenda item 3G, AC-20-00016. Trajectory by Pete Beeman. A 1% for art for the USA Softball Hall of Fame Complex, address 2801 Northeast 50th Street. Randy, will you please introduce this item? Yes, good afternoon, commissioners. Um, first, I want to be sure that uh, I'm unmuted. So if somebody would confirm that. Confirmed. Great yes. to hear you. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to share the screen here as we practice this afternoon. <laughs> I'll take a few steps to get us there. Okay, if I've done this correctly, we have a full screen for it. says 1% for art for USA Softball Hall of Fame. The uh, Hall of Fame Stadium has been with us, with the city for a little over 30 years. Among other things, it hosts the Women's World Softball, the World Series for uh, women's collegiate sports. One thing that we learned during the selection process is that the culture of women's softball is a little bit different from some of men's sports, it isn't just the coaches and the players that show up when they come to Oklahoma City. It is the entire extended family, grandparents, aunts, uncles, sisters, brothers, and so on that come. And so when they come to Oklahoma City, uh, it makes a major impact economically for the city. Um, the funding for this particular project came from two different projects, one in 2014 that was funded by the 2014 Geo, uh, General Obligation Bond, and the other project which is currently ongoing and was funded by the 2017 General Obligation Bond. The total R award for this project is $200,000. This is the timeline that we had on putting the project together and announcing it. December 18th, just before Christmas, it was announced in BitSync. Deadline was on the 22nd of January of this year with 24 applications from around the country and, and uh, one from overseas. On the 30th, the first selection committee meeting uh, met and chose four finalists. Commissioner Bailey was on the selection committee, still is on the selection committee for that note. Had a mandatory site tour on March the 6th. And of course, all of these um, meetings were we were able to do in person at that time. We did discuss at the mandatory site tour that there was something a little troubling on the horizon that may change our agenda after that. And sure enough, we ended up having the April 10th final presentations online. And uh, we liked it so well, Robbie may comment about that late, this later, but we liked it so well that we'll probably continue doing the selection process online as much as possible, uh, there can be a significant savings for the city. 
by doing so. The committee chose the conceptual design trajectory by Pete Beeman. Pete is an artist who's based in both Portland, Oregon and in New York City. Uh, the committee, after looking at his conceptual design report, instructed him to research, do some further research on materials and lighting. A couple of questions that had come up during the presentation. They wanted him to, to uh, come back with a, a final conceptual design report, which he did. And then when I received that about a week and a half ago, I circulated that to the selection committee, all of whom uh, weighed in and said, yes, this looks uh, fantastic and, and uh, reiterated the recommendation to the Arts Commission. So this is uh, part of the piece trajectory. And of course, you're seeing a trajectory of a softball that has been knocked out of the statement, uh, stadium and is bouncing down into the entry plaza. Uh, so this is this is the main entrance. You can enter around this, and then there's a companion piece to this over on this other side of the entry. Uh, and uh, so a lot of people congregate into this area. Uh, what you're seeing is uh, stainless steel tubes that create the trajectory bouncing down to a cast glass softball that is three feet in diameter and will be internally lighted with LED lights. So it was particularly the glass that was the question about the material. In his original proposal, Pete mentioned that glass may be a possibility, uh, also considered resin. Uh, the committee liked the idea of, of doing cast glass because it is something that is almost literally timeless. The glass itself could last for a thousand years, assuming that everything else holds together. And they like the idea that if there was enough money in the budget that uh, the piece would be lighted. Uh, both of those items came through in the final conceptual design report. This is another view. The second trajectory is on what's called the spine. This is a concrete area that is the walkway leading up to the, st to the stadium. And there uh, will be the second trajectory that has an, another softball. And of course, it will be lighted as well. So the committee felt like that this design really achieved one thing that the chief operating officer of USA Softball asked for, and that is an Instagrammable moment. Uh, so all the people that I told you about earlier that show up at the Hall of Fame, they're just at the beginning of it. Softball players are really dedicated and love the uh, USA softball complex and visit throughout the year. If they happen to be in the area, he said people just stop by, pop out of the car, look around as long as they can, maybe go to the museum and uh, take a picture that they Instagram to everybody in, that they know of in the country. So uh, this gives them, uh, we feel like, that opportunity to do exactly that. Um, I might mention that there is, I don't have a photo of it here, but there is also a Leonard Murray bronze over in front of the um, Hall of Fame Museum that's worth a visit also. And it, it has been photographed many times in the past as well. This is the budget. We looked at it and uh, felt like that he had adequately covered everything that he needed to be needed to cover. It seems like a reasonable approach for this uh, particular size project. I want to point out uh, three things here. So this is the cost per for one uh, softball and one trajectory. There's the cost for the second one. Uh, so a lot of the costs for the first in, in creating the first one are uh, sub, uh, excuse me. A lot of the costs for the second one are already subsumed, sub, subsumed into the cost of the first trajectory and the first softball. The second one's also a little bit lower. The third thing I wanted to point out is the contingency of around 10%, which seems appropriate from this. As was famously said by Donald Rumsfeld, there are a lot of unknown unknowns. Uh, Pete's been around uh, long enough to know that a project like this can have a lot of moving parts that don't show up. And so he's wisely held back $20,000. Uh, probably most of which will end up being spent on, on the project. Here's another uh, artist rendering with people up on the, the upper deck of the stadium. And so with that, we recommend to you 
uh, or the selection committee recommends to the Arts Commission trajectory, the USA Softball Hall of Fame Stadium Public Art by artist Pete Beeman, and projected completion if uh, city council, if, the, if you recommend a city council and they act on th this with, uh, with a contract in the next two to three months, the fall of 2021 is when we'll see the light of softballs at the Hall of Fame Stadium. Thank you, and are there any questions? Thank you, Randy. I, I noticed in the packet, uh, and apologize, I'm operating from multiple devices. I noticed cracks in the ground. How is that being created? Is that like a Trump Leo effect? Uh, yes, I didn't include a close up of that in this presentation, but he, he has suggested that he will uh, probably paint that onto the concrete. Robbie suggested today that we forward to him the information about the Ruby Lake glass, the, mm -hmm. the uh, glass that is going to be used on the, oh, excuse me, the Deep Fork River Trail. You might remember Gabe Friedman and Denise Duong's proposal for that. Uh, so that's something that would be a permanent uh, piece that, that would be applied, probably far more long lasting than just paint would be. But that's his intention, uh, his little bit of humor. <laughs> Thank you, Randy. Commissioners, any questions for Randy or comments? Um, Commissioner Cooper. Commissioner Cooper, uh, was in the selection process, was there any, uh, and I guess I'd have to address this to Commissioner Bailey since she was there, uh, any discussion about uh, people I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm wondering whether or not people are going to be attracted to it to want to interact physically with those big hoops. I don't know if it's, uh, I couldn't tell how wide it is, if it's something that people will want to hang on, try to climb, um, or that type of thing. Commissioner Bailey? Is that something you could speak to? I know that it was um, addressed in the description that you know engineering would be taken into consideration and he had already done some level of engineering in his first presentation to the selection committee and then obviously it would go to further engineering from there. All the materials are really durable on this particular project with the understanding and knowledge that teams are going to be congregating around the piece and that may mean that they have some unconventional arrangements and how they're interacting with it and so um that was taken into consideration well i wasn't so much concerned about that although i was probably short-sighted in not thinking about that uh, i was more concerned about uh maybe in after hours when people um wanting to interact when it wasn't, uh, you know, when the facility was closed. Um, I, th I think looks Randy sort of can- uh, It looks sort of appealing for people <laughs> who like to physically get involved with, yeah. with art. <laughs> yeah, so the USA Softball has their office there, uh, pretty close to kind of where the Leonard Murray uh, piece is. And I, Randy can address this, but I think that they have gated entry into the stadium. So it, it is monitored pretty, pretty closely after hours. And Randy, is there anything you would add to that, to Commissioner Cooper's do, concerns? We know by experience that somebody will try to climb this piece, maybe multiple somebodies will. It'll be constructed so that it can stand up to that. It certainly isn't going to encourage that, but it, it will be constructed to stand up to that. Uh, at uh, When the complex is closed, the, it, the gates are closed, there is security. So uh, there isn't a whole lot of concern that somebody is going to try to come in and do that uh, at a time when, there's, when there are not people around. So it's going to be very much an eyes on uh, type of artwork. So, Thank you, um, Randy. Commissioner Cooper, do you have a follow-up? No, I just think it's a really fun piece. Um, I, uh, I think it looks like fun. 
it's exciting all of the enhancements and the expansion of the hall of fame that stadium i'm, I'm so excited for what's happening in that space yeah. i love other, the glass softballs any other questions or comments from commissioners or any citizens who wish to speak for or against this item I if, I may, if i may robbie please I did want to point out that there are three conditions in the staff report. Just make sure that all the commissioners are aware of this about specific landing areas for the arcs to be determined and that the artist provides specifications and warranties to inform the language in the final agreements and that the artist signs the Bureau Rights Act waiver prior to it being presented to council. I just wanted to make sure that you knew those were the conditions recommended by staff that if a motion should be made in support, that it should include those. What was the list of recommendations again, Robbie? I missed the first one. Yeah. The first one is that specific landing areas for the artworks arcs to be determined and that the artist provides specifications and warranties to inform language in the final agreements and any maintenance requirements and that the artist signs Visual Arts Rights Act waiver prior to the artist agreement being presented to council. This particular piece, as Randy mentioned, the Softball Hall of Fame, they uh, operate this site, so they will be responsible for maintenance. And some of the questions that you've already asked about wear and tear and, you know, people, if, if someone climbs on it, they will be responsible for helping us maintain the piece. And so it will be in their best interest to help us also keep it secure. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Chair. I'd love to just speak a little bit about uh, serving on the selection committee if I have a chance. Please, to. Commissioner Bailey. Um, it was a really rewarding selection committee to serve on and I learned a lot about softball. I also learned a lot about the contribution that the Softball Hall of Fame Stadium has to the city of Oklahoma City and to our region, really. I mean, it is a destination for a lot of young female athletes and a lot of uh, people that love to experience the adventure district um, on a regular basis. So the interesting thing about this selection committee, um, and this kind of goes to why we do these uh, artist proposals as part of our process, is that I don't think anyone on the selection committee had the idea that this piece would look like this, or that it would have this kind of motion and um, that it was be so dynamic. and um, all of the pieces that were submitted by the artists that were selected were very interesting and different. And um, I think it just continues to value the process that we have in place that we, we come up with better art for our public collection when we let artists um, use their skills to develop mm -hmm. something for a site. So really believe in the process and and i i believe there's a lot of buy-in from everyone in this selection committee usa softball people from the cvb um and and also our all of our city representatives that were on there so that's all i i i would move to recommend this piece um with the three edits that robbie mentioned i have a motion from commissioner bailey with the three conditions specified specified by staff is there a second second um i have a second i believe coming from commissioner hassenbeck or commissioner eichmann i i apologize eichmann, yeah eichmann i have a motion and a second to recommend with the three stated conditions by staff is there any further discussion Hearing none, Jennifer, will you please conduct the roll call vote? Commissioner Bailey. Yes. Commissioner Cooper, or I'm sorry, Commissioner Eichmann. Yes. Commissioner Chambers. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Hassenbeck. Yes. Commissioner Hill. An enthusiastic yes. <laughs> Commissioner Kovash. Yes. Commissioner Salyer. Yes. Commissioner Seward. Yes. Mr. Chair, this motion carries. 
Motion carries. Moving on to agenda item four, discussion action on reports from committees. 4A, Commissioner Advocate. Commissioner Yosef could not be with us today, and I believe Robbie's making that report. Yes, Commissioner uh, Yosef asked me to make her report today. Thank you. Um, very important to report that on May 12th, um, the City Council voted to substantially amend its consolidated plan. The consolidated plan not, is different than our comprehensive plan. The consolidated plan is our, our plan to use our federal community development block grant dollars. And Congress had voted to uh, provide um, all cities uh, additional CDBG dollars through HUD. And so this was a very substantial amendment. And in addition, wanted to point out to the Arts Commission, in addition to several areas of need in Oklahoma City that these funds are specifically to address, um, things like, like uh, persons without homes um, and, and low and moderate income neighborhoods. Um, the city also voted to specify that $300,000 go to nonprofit arts organizations, specifically to artists and to uh, low mod income programs that uh, would respond, help respond to COVID-19. And it was also proposed that Allied Arts be the sub-recipient to manage and administer those funds. And Allied Arts will not, will not accept any management fees to, to do this service. Um, but that, that, that the, they were certainly in a position to help the city assure a really good distribution. So this was a, a really remarkable thing. And I just wanted to make, and C Commissioner Yosef wanted to make sure that you understood this because of all of your good work um, and the coordination work that we've had now over many years, that this was very significant and was approved by um, city council. And that's thank it. you, Robbie, mm -hmm. and thank you to Council, and of course, thank you to our friends at our United Arts Fund, Allied Arts, um, for we know we'll properly manage and distribute these funds to organizations who keep our arts and cultural landscape vibrant. Um, moving on to agenda item 4B, Air Force Monument, Commissioner Salyer and Seward. Commissioner <laughs> uh, Stewart, are you there as my partner in crime? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Do you want to discuss it, Maine? I'll be brief and just please add in, but I'm happy to report I think we're really um, making some forward movement with regard to the Air Force sculpture. Um, Robbie had a couple of conversations with some folks at um, actually in the library system that had provided us some great history um, for Woodson Park as it relates to Oklahoma City's early um, aircraft history and uh, history with flight. And um, there may be a very nice fit for this piece to end up um, at a location in South Oklahoma City uh, in Woodson Park. And so um, we're working on developing um, a budget. There is good news is in, in that location, there actually is some um, 1% money that could be available to complete this project. And so we're um, moving forward with that suggestion. Thank you, Commissioner Ron? Salyer. Commissioner Seward, anything it, to add? It, it, it's an exciting project and, and Oklahoma City really uh, had a lot to do with uh, pioneering a lot of uh, 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 air, air, airplane uh, manufacture and travel and um, uh, it's, it's an exciting project. Uh, and uh, I think it fits well for the Air Force Monument as well. Yeah, just as a reminder, those who may not remember the composition and the organization of that sculpture, it, it speaks not only to the Air Force as defense, but forward looking into space travel. It, it's really layered in, mean, in meaning. 
And um, I got to read the fun email response from Buddy Johnson. And if you are not familiar with them, he has been my lifesaver more than once as our downtown Oklahoma City librarian responsible for the Oklahoma City archives. If there is ever an image of Oklahoma City and I don't know what it is and it's related to an art museum exhibition, I go straight to Buddy. And as always, he had a list um, of, of reasons historically validating why this could be a good fit. Um, again, Commissioner Seward and Commissioner Salyer, thank you so much for your service. This, I, this has been a tough booger of, of, of a committee appointment, but you've navigated it wonderfully for our city and the commission. Well, and for Commissioner Bailey, this is another piece, um, Allison, by Leonard McMurray. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, it just as he has such interesting history uh, in and around Oklahoma City, it, it, I think if we reconfigure the way this piece is displayed, I think the actual figure will really come to life in a way that will make it so fresh and exciting. I'm really excited about it. I agree. Thank you again, both commissioners. Any discussion, comments, or questions for commissioners Salyer or Seward? Hearing none, moving on to um, agenda item 4C, the Curtis Schwartz Awards. And this committee is chaired by Commissioner Seward. Uh, I do not have a report this month. Thank you, Commissioner Seward. Moving on to agenda item five, report from staff. Robbie, please share your report. Certainly, thank you. So your projects report is in your packet and I hope you have had time to review it. I won't go over each item separately, but please do call me or Randy if you have any questions about any of the projects listed. I did too want to mention two other things. Randy mentioned that the Softball Hall of Fame, we uh, conducted that last the presentations by the art artists virtually. And um, we were lucky that we had a report from the Los Angeles uh, Public Art Office that helped us understand that they actually did that too and preferred it. And what we have found that artists somehow seem a little more prepared and adjusted because they're in their own environment. We're gonna be looking at the fee schedule that the Arts Commission has previously established and this is where Randy made the remark, it might save money. Um, we're, we're planning on bringing that back to you next month with um, potentially some changes to that. Um, and then the other thing on Softball Hall of Fame again, and all the talk about Leonard McMurray, um, now that we've learned that there's a beautiful Leonard McMurray, it's quite large, called Play at Home at the Softball Hall of Fame, we're gonna be researching the origins of that work and find out who owns it. Because if the city owns it, we don't have it listed in our collection and we don't have it insured as of now. So wanted to report that to you as well. And that's my report. Thank you, Robbie. It's like when you first started as our arts and cultural liaison, our, I, I don't think anyone at the city knew what kind of assets we had in our public art collection. Right. And it's still growing. It <laughs> Thank you, Robbie. You're welcome. Um, any other um, questions or discussion comments for Robbie from her staff report? Hearing none, moving on to agenda item six, comments from commissioners. The comments for me, um, agenda item um, 6A, I've, I've asked commissioners Hassenbeck and Loftus to um, uh, form a special task force to investigate the integration of how we approach the project funds, those construction costs that say, this is your budget, this is your 1%. Um, so in working with the MAPS office, public works, planning, of course, Robbie and Randy, um, finding ways to stabilize that moving target of a budget. What is our 1%? What is transferred what should be used for art. Robbie and Randy, um, as well as the commission, need to know that money well in advance. And considering the experience of Commissioners Loftus and Hassenbeck, they seemed the best to communicate with um, architects, with, with developers, with those supervising projects 
to see how we can efficiently establish that cost in the beginning. So it's not convenient to say, oh, we've actually subtracted some of that and you only have this to work with. I may be speaking too much, but in Robbie's defense and in Randy's defense and in the selection committee's participation in their defense, that needs to be as efficient as possible so we are properly using taxpayer funds. Um, it's a great responsibility. Um, Commissioner Hassenbeck, is there anything you'd like to add or share? No, I'm excited to uh, start kind of exploring the process and try and you know get a get a better handle on what funds are available and how early we can make that knowledge known in, in the construction process. Thank you, Commissioner Hassenbeck for serving and of course to Commissioner Loftus as well. Um, I would also like to thank again, Commissioner Hassenbeck and Commissioner Eichmann. Um, they're reviewing that particular language in um, the curatorial plan that rather speaks to curatorial plans and in defining the role of curator and I believe you'll have a report to us perhaps at the next meeting. Um, Commissioners Eichmann or Hassenbeck, is there anything like you'd like to add to that report? Not at this time. No. Fingers In, crossed, next meeting. <laughs> fingers crossed, next meeting. Um, now moving on to agenda item seven. Um, items from commission members. Rather, this is agenda item 6B, items from commissioners. Any announcements, comments from commissioners, please? Hearing none, moving on to agenda item 6C, comments from citizens. Is there anyone else on the call who would like to speak to the commission? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.